first met Arthur, I was at a primitive, the main primitive skills gathering. Again, if you check that out, primitiveskills.com. That's um, friends of mine up here in New England in Maine. Um, awesome community of people. And through that community, I've learned some of the most um, valuable, not just valuable because of the utilitarian part, but valuable, like spiritually valuable things that I've learned, like making cordage from natural materials, making rope in nature. That's one of the most valuable things I've learned. Um, a lot of uh, learning how to make fire by hand. Those kind of things are so valuable intrinsically just to being human. And I've learned that from the primitive skills community. And that's why I first met Arthur. And when I first saw him, he was wearing buckskins, dancing on a pit in the ground that he had made. And when I went over to see what he was doing, he was removing the husks from wild rice. Now, wild rice is one of my favorite foods. Um, it's one of those plants that you can use as a staple crop in your diet. In other words, in the same way that rice is used in Asia, or wheat and barley is used in the West, or quinoa is used in South America, we can use wild rice as an indigenous native um, food source here. We can eat quite a bit of our calories from it. So Arthur has this way of um, not just harvesting it, but actually processing the wild rice. Remember, if you go to the store and buy wild rice, somebody's processed it for you. It doesn't just show up in nature as these nice little grains here. We've got to actually get them out of the husk, and that's a process. And um, Arthur's been nice enough to let me uh, pull all this stuff out into his kitchen so we can look at how that's done, and he can explain to you a little bit about that plant and how you process it. All right, Arthur, if I was, uh, if I was um, going to approach wild rice in the ecosystem, tell us about its eco range and how we would even find it. Well, it's, a, it's an aquatic plant, so that means that it actually grows in standing water, not up on land or in a forest somewhere. And it usually grows in water that's a meter to a meter and a half deep. So we need a canoe to really access it efficiently and to be able to gather. The canoe not only is the way that we get to the rice, but it's also the container that we use to hold the rice once we uh, dislodge these mature grains. Is that true for the indigenous people as well? Did they use like they a canoe? They did, yeah. They were doing it from their, uh, their traditional canoes. Amazing. And what do you got in your hands here? These bad boys are called rice knockers. Okay, tell us a little bit about that. Well, the rice knocker is essentially this tool that you can certainly use your hand, but it's much faster. And try to imagine that I'm sitting backwards in a canoe, and you're sitting facing me. Actually, you'd be standing as you are now, and you would be using a pole to slowly move us through this colony of wild rice. And I would be using these sticks to lean over a group of the rice and just make this whipping motion down to throw all those mature grains into the bottom of the canoe. Wait, well, uh, real quick, what's yeah. a, a grain? Can you just explain for the people who are watching what yeah, grain a, actually a, is? A grain is the name of the fruit of the grass family. So oat, rye, barley, rice, these are all a specific type of fruit called a grain. Okay, and so it's a grass, and so the wild rice in, in its genus species is what? Zizania palustris. It's a beautiful. That's I like that name a lot. Around here. Okay, so that's a that's a tall grass essentially. So when you right. just describe that motion, you're pulling a big tall grass right. over. All these stems, we're leaning them over the canoe, and there'll be ten or fifteen stems leaning just like this. And this, uh, the second stick, this whipping motion, it essentially just throws all those grains that are ready to be removed from the plant into the bottom of the canoe and into your partner and out into the water. <laughs> right. Side. So you're helping actually to spread and colonize that plant you while bet. you're harvesting. You bet. We're throwing those grains throughout the water because we don't perfectly land them in the canoe. Got it. Let's see that motion. Let's see both sides and what it looks like. over and over. As I lean them over, I whip them with the other. And if I do it at a, at a nice uh, pace, I can keep up with my partner. And at the same time, I'm not damaging and breaking the plants up. Right. It's essentially the motion that we use to keep dislodging these grains. Uh, some people sort of uh, pull them over and they tap them instead. And that's where the name knocker derives. Um, but the person who had taught me rice uh, showed me this method, and, I, and it's the one we use. We're sort of, we can tell who we've been taught from by the method that we use. And over here, there's this big container here of... 
I mean, this is amazing to me, man. I've been buying wild rice, and it's not it's not inexpensive. Now, this is the rice before it's been removed from the husk, right? That's right. And this is just one of four bags that we got this year. Wow. And this is what it looks like. This, is, of course, has been dried so that it will be stable and not mold. And we just dried it on tarps uh, outside in the sun. And it takes, in this climate here in Maine, about three, sometimes four days before it's totally dry. And... And that's what it is, um, fresh out of the field, so to speak, what it would right. look like. Okay, and there's a little bit over here, so you can see that on a surface there. And so inside of that would actually be... Right, if I pull off this husk that it also has this long bristle, that's the raw grain that you see right there. Perfect. Will you open one of those up for us? You I'd bet. love to see that. We'll get a nice big grain here. Essentially, our feet <laughs> do this. Right, and there's that beautiful wild rice. And, you know, I got to eat some of this wild rice here last night from Maine, and I was so impressed with the texture of it uh, compared to the ones that I've been buying. How do they differ from the ones that we purchase in the store? Yeah, the, the ones that have been purchased in a store, uh, a lot of them have been machine harvested, which doesn't necessarily change its texture, but they have been cured by letting them sit out for a much longer period of time where they develop their color and their flavor that people have come to associate with wild rice. But unfortunately, that prolonged curing that they use, which involves water and even sometimes steaming and before they remove the hulls, creates a very, very tough grain that really never, ever softens without prolonged cooking. Whereas real wild rice, I say real, collected in the traditional manner, processed in a more traditional manner by hand, it cooks soft as white right. rice Right, yeah, which is cool because I found wild rice to be somewhat irritating to the intestinal tract because it's, it's kind of rough, but now I know that it can be much softer and that one we had yeah. last night was really soft. What about this thing here? What are we <laughs> looking at? Well, this is the part where you get to dance because we take these... These uh, rice grains that you see with their husks that enclose the grain.